Apologies, the city gardeners have decided to clear landscape right outside my office today. And unfortunately, the world does not revolve around me and they could not reschedule. So uh, we're gonna do today's video with a little background noise. But I'm gonna show you my favorite tips for stopping tear out. Tear out is an annoying, annoying thing that happens to woodworkers. And I have a few great ways to stop it with hand tools on the table saw, on the router table, and on the bandsaw. So let's come on into the bench and I'll show you with a hand plane. Very quick review, in case you haven't seen any of my hand plane videos, when you are planing a piece of wood, when you're going with the long grain, you wanna look at the wood grain and you can see, this is a great sample piece because it has sap wood. You can see the grain goes up this way. And so the tree was actually growing this way. So you always wanna plane this way. The metaphor is pet with the hair of the cat, not against it. But you can see you would plane this way. That, that's not my trick here because my trick has to do with end grain. So what happens when you're planing end grain is you're at a whole new ball game. Because the tree has grown up this way, they're like little fibers or little ropes that go up this way. If you plane this way, you're going to get tear out. And you can see right here, you can see that's just with one stroke of my hand plane, we got this tear out here. It gets even worse when you go from the top. So look at that. Look at that, that's just terrible. So here's my trick. And it's a very simple one. I'm gonna show you two ways to do this. But first is you want to do one stroke on the, across the long grain in the direction you're gonna be planing. You wanna do one stroke chamfer and I like to kind of do it up because that keeps this corner from tearing out if you really wanted to you could do a couple here and a couple over there but basically I do one stroke for every stroke I'm going to do this way so watch one two. and we've done five which was how many we did over here and you can see we got absolutely no tear out so you want to do across your end grain first before you ever plane so this works for if you're planing end grain too this plane isn't even very sharp right now, but you can see I'm getting no tear out. So that is a great way to do it. <clears throat> the second way to do this is to put a backer board and you're gonna see backer boards are gonna be a theme of this video. So I haven't chamfered the corner of this one, but we're just gonna take a backer board. You wanna put it at the same height as your other board, just like that. And then you can very simply do all the ingrained planing you want and you're not gonna get any tear out. So let's head over to the table saw and I'll show you how we accomplish it there. So as you can see, when there's no support piece, you're gonna get this nasty fuzz here. Sometimes it can be a lot worse with like a softer wood and there's an easy way to fix this, which is again, just with a backer board. So let me show you how good that looks. And what's great about backer board, you especially wanna use it when you're cutting box joints um, or anything where you're gonna be making multiple cross cuts. You wanna have your backer board there so that it protects your piece. So let's cut this again. Now you can see how absolutely clean that cut is. So when you're doing finish work and you're cross cutting and you want it to be super clean, just a simple backer board, anything that you know is flat, like a piece of MDF or plywood, uh, is so great because you get really, really fine results. Uh, and you can even double stick that to your fence or something. And then you know if you double stick that to your fence that that kerf line is gonna be perfect support the entire time and you don't have to move it. So if you're cutting multiple pieces, uh, that's really, really easy to do. So a router table is one of the most serious offenders for tear out. You have a very fast moving bit, sometimes 13,000 or so RPMs. And when you go, especially on end grain, it's gonna tear out right here almost every time. And so there's two ways to overcome this. And one is, Always do your end grain first, because then when you go to do your long grain, uh, it's going to fix that tear out. The other way is with a backer board. So let me show you what happens when you do it without a backer board and then do the long grain second. We'll do that first, and then I'm gonna show you with a backer board. So now you can see it fixed it most of the way, and you could probably dial that in with sandpaper, but there's still a little tear out there. And that sometimes is just unacceptable. I know for me, that would drive me, f uh, sorry, it was really hard not to swear there. That would drive me bonkers. Um, so let me show you what happens when you use a backer board and you can you know, take your time and really avoid this. So you can see here, absolutely no tear out. This tear out you see here, that was from when I 
cross cut it on the table saw or something uh, when I was getting ready for this video. But uh, no tear out whatsoever. So a backer board works really, really well. And you don't really have to hold that backer board super secure. I would just make it you know, pretty close to right on the edge, but it doesn't even have to be that good. You just run that along and you're good to go. Uh, so let's head over to the bandsaw. I'm gonna show you how you take care of tear out there. So a couple things can happen with the bandsaw. One of them is when you're cutting really small pieces, this is a huge gap and that piece can get caught in here and jam up the blade and cause it to bend, break teeth, uh, can cause a scary situation. The other thing is with this huge gap, those teeth are guaranteed to have tear out. They have nothing backing them up and you know, you, they're big, ugly teeth, especially uh, when you're cutting tight curves, if you're using a much smaller, finer tooth blade, uh, you're just gonna get tear out. So a super easy way to do this is just create yourself a whole zero clearance table. You just take a piece of scrap, put it in just like that, and then you can just clamp it down. Usually two points of contact is good. And then you get a pretty much zero tear out free bandsaw cut where you can cut small curves and do lots of things without fear of teeny little pieces on your curves falling into your bandsaw insert and causing all sorts of problems. So uh, that's a great way to avoid it on the bandsaw. Whew, I'll tell you what, those gardeners, they, they've been going hard. I'm gonna bring them some water right after we're done shooting. But guys, thanks for watching. Stay safe in the shop. If you're new here, please subscribe. Best way to support the channel, head over to the Cat's Moses store. Link's down below. Buy a dovetail jig, a stop block, a t-shirt. Got lots of great stuff over there for you. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.